time decision from Horascor and after almost two decades in homeopathy I get a lot of questions from students and practitioners and one of the common question is how do you study the Materia Medica? How do you know your remedies so well that you can pick them from that initial from that final analysis with confidence? You know, how do you memorize this information? What's the insider stuff? So you see, I've spent the last two decades in homeopathy and I've gone on to build an entire template and methodology around simplifying it for practice. And thousands of students and practitioners use it in every facet of their homeopathic study and practice. Now, simplifying homeopathy has become my life's work, but I was never someone who decided one day that I would create a template and a formula around it, but I have someone who loves to classify. I get massive pleasure around building a logical correlation things, correlationship around things that seem superficially nonsense. So I invented the stages template or formula and it's become a gold standard for homeopathic practice because it literally changes the way you approach your patient's cases and also the way you study and you prescribe your medicine. So the key behind prescribing medicines and start studying homeopathic Metro medica is to be intentional about what type of remedy your patient wants. Now, not to just go around and start prescribing remedies based on what you learned in school and hope people will come, right? You have to engineer and you have to be intentional about how you use your remedies. What aspect of that remedy is going to be of benefit to your patient? This is interesting, right? Because this is the only way you're going, going to get people excited about your homeopathy and you're going to make your remedies powerful tools of healing. So the way I do is understand my remedies using the stages template. And that makes sure that I know and the you know and I can prescribe the same remedy in different ways based on exactly where my patient is and what they want. This is the secret to have a great result and a great outcome. Now, at some point in time, I only studied remedies one way, the classical way. So I could only use it like a constitutional. But in the last 10 years, since I started intentionally classifying the remedy information according to stages, I've maximized the impact and the efficiency and the potential of my remedies. And this is exactly what I want to train you today about, right? So when you have a new remedy that you want to learn, I want you to take a piece of A4 size paper and I want you to make four columns and name them stage one, two, three, and four. And then in each of the column, I want you to start filling the following information. So let's fill up the stage one information of the remedy. Stage one information is all about the diagnostic symptoms or the pathological symptoms that you find in a remedy. So basically, you know, there are a few components that you'll have to look into. First of all, find this, the major sphere of action or the major locations where the remedy has a strong action. Um, you know, basically those key locations that remedy targets. Look at diagnostic symptoms. Does the remedy create specific group of symptoms that point to a certain disease diagnosis or a certain syndrome? Or look for, um, you know, it, does it create any specific destructive effects on certain organs? So all this information is important because it's the, it's, it's the action which the remedy has innately got within it, irrespective of whether you prove it in a potency. So let's take some examples. So China produces intermittent fever-like symptoms or produces anemia and has a tendency to destroy blood, red blood corpuscles. Or Lachesis produces septicemia and poisoning-like symptoms. You have Morxol, it produces paralysis and secondary syphilis-like symptoms. So all this information, where do you find it? In some form, you can find some, you know, diagnostic symptoms in the drug provings, which are functional. Later on, you can find it confirmed with clinical symptoms or clinical patterns or diagnosis that the remedy can resolve by practitioners who work at this stage. And in certain cases, you can find it in the toxicological rubrics, basically from forensic uh, information about that remedy, if it has that effect in good form. So people like Compton Burnett, Boger, Clark, 
all these are stage one practitioners who actually use remedies in that form right let's look at stage two information of a remedy this is the information where now you build upon the diagnostic symptoms now you're looking at what are the peculiars or what are the concomitants that come along with your diag diagnostic symptoms without a reason right so say for example you have now china we know it has it has this tendency to create intermittent fever like symptoms but then you realize that there are chills that begin from the leg below the knee and this is important because this is giving you something special about the intermittent fever like symptoms that china creates uh, in that rem in that person let's look at lachesis it causes septicemia like symptoms but then at stage two, you realize that lachesis has also the, got this ability to create this constriction and tightness where there is inability to bear any type of tight clothing on the body. So if you find this together, that's lachesis at stage two. Let's look at morgue. It produces these secondary syphilis-like symptoms, but then there is this whole intense sweating, which is without relief. So where do these symptoms come up now? So again, you find them in drug provings. You can confirm that clinically. And then you're looking at practitioners who work at the stage. And they are practitioners like Bonninghausen, Nash, Clarkey. So all these people, they define, you know, just one step beyond the clinical diagnosis. That's your stage two information. Now, let's look at what is the information in the remedy which can be used at stage three. Now, stage three where it, this is like uh, the breakthrough, right? It's where the holism comes in and where the, the remedy is creating uh, basically this fundamental causative parts, effects. You can see the constitution or the personality of the symptoms, the generals come up here. So there is basically a linking now in different parts of a remedy that are coming together as one whole. The holistic concept starts with stage three because before that it's just particulars and you know symptoms which are all scattered and spread across right so say now we come back to those remedies we were talking about china it has this fundamental causative factor of not being well since malaria through clinical confirmation we have this whole state of a broken down constitutional who, who has a weak tummy who has easy hemorrhages everything started from malaria so if you have a strong causative factor remedy which is linking multiple pathologies and multiple diagnoses that's the stage three information let's look at more it has created violent thoughts and impulsiveness and hurriedness and then you can clinically confirm that the personality of Mork is violent, impulsive and hurried. So you start imagining a person, uh, you know, that is a Mork personality and this is also stage three information. Let's look at how do we get the stage three information. So basically you are looking at generalization. Now, one of the first homeopaths who proposed how you get these general symptoms in a remedy is by analogy. Now, this is important because the Materia Medica, um, oh sorry, the proving information is not always complete. You do not always get a remedy to prove to such an extent that you can define all generals coming together. Most provings are incomplete. So, analogy is quite a powerful concept where you can actually start putting together different particular symptoms and, and find the generals running through them. So, let's get an example. In the provings, lachesis has created tensive pain in the head. It has created pressive pains in the right orbit. So, I've just collected this from Allen's Encyclopedia. It creates painful pressure in the abdomen. So, what you, anal you know, what you infer from this is lachesis has this general symptom of pressure constriction tension tightness in different parts of the body or in general this is called the analogy this is what you're in for and then you confirm that in provings and then you find that lachesis has cured you know tightness in the knee even though in the provings 
there wasn't actually such a tightness created in the knee. But because we have inferred it and we have clinically proved it, lachesis has this general symptom. Does it make sense? So this is like where you start getting, um, you know, that creative and you start and but remaining grounded to find the information. Let's look at other ways you can do generalization. So another powerful tool for generalization is group analysis. And group analysis is not just a contemporary concept, you know, given by Ann Scholten or Sankran. In fact, it's very interesting that it was first proposed by Hahnemann. So now for people who do not know what is group analysis, it's basically where if a symptom is present in three or four remedies belonging to the same group, then it becomes a general. Okay, so let's look at how it works. So first, let, I want to actually take you to how Hahnemann talked about group analysis when he was talking about, um, you know, Ignatia and Naxomica. Okay, so this is um, homeopathic drug pictures by Margaret Tyler, and she's talking about how Hahnemann was comparing the mentality of two drugs, which is Ignatia and Naxformica. And what he mentions here, that he was comparing them because it could be inferred from the botanical relationship between the two plants that there are quite a few common symptoms to both of them, but the emotional disturbances of people for whom Ignatia is serviceable differs widely from that of people from whom Nux of use. So this is very important because this is the most common mistake I see new practitioners make and it's wonderful to see how Hahnemann overcomes it. So basically he's saying that although the positive effects of Ignatia are similar to that of Nux formica because they belong to the same botanical family, Ignatia is not suitable for people in whom anger, eagerness, or um, this violence is predominant, but for those subjects, uh, you know, who are subject to rapid alternation of gaiety and disposition to weep, or, or in whom we notice the emotional state. Even in high potency, Ignatia has no tendency to break into violence it, or revenge themselves, but they keep the annoyance to themselves and they keep uh, basically for whom these vexatious occurrence is want to dwell in the mind and cause grief. So what basically is trying to say here is that Ignatia has an emotional disturbances uh, disposition of anger and vexation just like Naxvomica. However, it is much more milder in its expression and much more suppressed in its manifestation. It can, you know, it dwells, it silently grieves, it's sighing, but Nux is quite violent and quite expressive. And this is a subtle difference, but it's a key difference between Nux and Ignatia, even if the other generals are the same. So the group general symptoms common to both remedies are this tendencies that we see of anger, vexation, annoyance, aggravations, but Nux is violent, Ignatia is mild and suppressed and sobbing. And that is the key. So remember, group analysis will give you common general symptoms of a remedy. You will but you will need to use it in correlation with the proving data to find the specific generals. And together, it will give you the real perspective, the real depth and the balance of your remedy understanding. And the beauty is that once you know the generals of a group, you can apply it to every other remedy in that group, even the unknown ones. So you suddenly are able to master dozens of other remedies from the Loganesi family, which is the Naxomica family, because they share those common set of indications. And all you need to know is those one or two peculiar symptoms of each individual remedy to differentiate and prescribe them. And for me, group analysis has helped me expand my knowledge of Metro America 10, 20 times in such a short time. And until you have used this tool, you will not believe how powerful it is. It's like one of the best leverage of your Metro America. And then we come to um, where you will find this information. Well, direct provings are the most um, useful way to get information on um, the generals in a drug. But again, you will need to use concepts of generalization using, you know, Burning Housen's method, you will need to understand analogy and also group analysis. And there are homeopaths who have already done the work for you. They have sorted out the generals, they have looked at clinical, they've looked at all this common symptoms in a group 
and they have created Matramedica based only on group analysis. Um, and that is the basis, you know, you can do it yourself and conform it, or you can look at the work of other people who have done the hard work for you. But it is this creative aspect that you need to own, you need to connect to and find that holistic essence or the overview of a remedy. And yes, there is a chance and, and a, you know, warning here that it can go into flights of, flights of fantasies, but Oh, you need to be grounded and understand the proving and compare and filter it with the proving to get the best of this. But this is the beauty and the strength and also the power of homeopathy once you start working at stage three and using these new tools. And then we come to stage four and it takes another level, right? And the connections go more deeper than stage three. In stage three, we were trying to connect different parts of a remedy together uh, into one whole right but in in stage four you even go beyond mind and body you get, even go beyond different parts of a of a remedy and particulars you go right at the energetic and the source level there is no separation between mind and body so basically what you're looking at is like china we found that it has not been well since syndrome of malaria causing different problems in the person here we see a common link right at a sensory level of overstimulation and followed by weakness and exhaustion which is mind and body so this is like the common general sensation of the entire china family which is nothing but the coffee family right so coffee and china at stage four belong to the same um you know common group of remedies of causing overstimulation followed by complete collapse and exhaustion both of these remedies do that. But what differentiates one from the other is the key to using this information um, you know, logically. And that's where you have to understand that China has periodic attacks of overstimulation followed by collapse and exhaustion. No other remedy in the coffee group has this. So periodicity is what really sets China apart. So where do you find this information? You can find this information in any of the Metro Americas, um, especially I love Bojo Synoptic Key. Bojo can define the generals, the pathologicals, and the mind symptoms in one or two keywords. And periodicity is key in his book. And then there are other books where you can find such differentiated factors, but read the provings. The provings will tell you where the common theme lies. Let's look at Mork. Mork shows the strong sense of power and control over others and himself. This is stage four information. This is the common connecting link. This power is not just mind, it's also body. This control is not just mind, also body, right? This is common to all row six elements. This is the group analysis of the gold series. But what differentiates Mork? So your Metro America stage four information is incomplete if you do not know the differentiation of that element or that remedy within the group and what differentiates Mork is this complete tendency to completely destroy and abuse the power Mork has complete loss of control and you know and complete paralysis and complete insanity mind body soul this is unique to Mork no other remedy in the gold series has this destruction at every level does make sense? So this is how you actually study remedies right from stage one, two, three, and four. That is the beauty of being able to understand your Metro America in these different components and plus being able to look at the whole. And switching these hats is the key. That is what will take you further. So where do you find this information? Drug provings. All the group analysis information, all the analogical information has been derived from drug provings. That is the first place where people go and derive this information. But there is a linking there, a subtle work that is going on below there. And that's what you need to learn um, or look at the information that's present in the books. Secondly, you need to know the knowledge of the source. Sometimes it comes a whole in a circle where the source information gives you such a lot about the remedy information you cannot disconnect the source and the natural habitat from the remedy it takes its essence it takes the energy into the provings and you cannot just 
delete out that information it's a part of the whole remedy picture okay so i hope this makes sense and you have to remember that not all remedies will have all the information at all the stages right this is not going to happen in one single sitting too it's a it's work in progress because as the remedy develops through clinical use and you know through case studies it's going to expand right but what i can confidently say that even if you do this homework and make an honest attempt for at least 10 of your favorite remedies you will have a pretty solid understanding of not just those 10 remedies but an entire group to expand your metro medica to master 100 remedies because each group will have at least 10 remedies right so no other system is going to give you this tremendous leverage and i promise you will never ever look back that is exactly the way how i built my metro medica from you know so called 100 to suddenly thousands of remedies right so i would really love to know what you think i want you to scroll down and leave me a comment does not matter if it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down, but tell me what do you think about this? Give me a reaction below. Tell me how this applies to your practice. I would love to you know, hear from you.